Hello Internet and YouTube in particular, this is Sabrock and I'm here to talk about the new ship for Star Trek Attack Wing that was recently previewed on WizKids website, the Species 8472 Bioship Alpha. Uh, this is a brand new faction, kind of like Kazon, except this one's probably not going to be bad. Uh, the, uh, the ship itself is a 6256 for the uh, unique, presumably a 6255 for the uh, uh, generic. That means it is not quite as tough as the Dominion Battleship, which is currently the toughest ship in the game, uh, but it's got those two evade dice, and the ship itself is a lot more maneuverable. Um, so overall, I think it's probably a better ship, um, just if you take the ship card by itself. Um, its special ability is whenever you attack with a primary weapon, you inflict at least three points, and if you inflict at least three damage, you get an auxiliary power token on the target ship. Since it's got a sixth attack, if you uh, even just firing with no modifiers at all, you are likely to score at least three hits. If they don't uh, evade any, you get your effect. Um, even against reasonably evasive ships, if you have taken target lock, you get, you're get you probably going to get your, uh, your effect off. It doesn't have battle stations, though. Instead, it has the new action, uh, which looks like the little double helix action. We've seen it on the Borg uh, uh, cards before. Um, this is the regenerate action. It's a new action. Uh, it and when you take this action, you remove one damage card from your ship, face up or face down, so you can get rid of particularly nasty uh, critical effects. Or no, that that's it. Yeah, uh, re repair, uh, remove one one damage card. But you can't attack that turn. Um, if it was just repair one damage card, I would think this action would be decent. It would be on par with the evasive maneuvers action, but the ship can also do. Um, in that it es essentially negates one damage. Um, but evasive maneuvers negates one incoming damage. Regenerate negates one damage you've already taken. Um, the fact that you have this, frankly, enormous penalty of not being able to attack the same turn uh, means that I think I will probably never take this action. Um, unless, except in, in very specific circumstances, like I can't fire elsewise... Um, I can't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be shot at, so I don't need to take evasive maneuvers. Um, it's, it's just, I was really hoping for more from this new action. I was hoping it would be some sort of, uh, some sort of, uh, uh adaptation, a, a very good, like a, a really powerful defensive action I was hoping for, um, but apparently not. So, the ship overall, I think, is, is might be one of the best ships in the game. Definitely the strongest, for sure. Um, I definitely think it's a stronger ship than the, uh, the uh, Jem'Hadar battleship. I don't know if it's necessarily the best ship in the game, because best uh, has a lot of extra parts to it. Um, you have to have the right faction support. You have to have the right metagame. A, a ship that's really, really good... Uh, at one point in the metagame might not be very good when other ships are available that uh, that happen to do well against it. Um, so overall, I'm not sure if, if it's the best ship in the game, but it's certainly the strongest. It only has a 90 degree forward arc, no rear arc, which is fine because because that's uh, uh, the rear arc is really mainly a Federation thing. Um, I think a couple of Klingon ships have a rear arc as well, but that's it. Um... So let's move on to the captain. Uh, they only spoiled one captain. Uh, I don't. We don't know if there's going to be another captain in there. Probably not, because um, I think usually they do uh, preview secondary captains. In fact, they did for the Kazon. So yeah, there's probably only one captain in this, and it's the Bioship Alpha pilot. Um, it says, uh, and basically his effect is each round during the planning phase, um, you can look at one ship, uh, uh, one enemy ship near you, uh, look at their maneuver dial, and then set your own after they've set there, so they can't change it. Um, and that is in place of taking an action. So, uh, uh, the wording on his card indicates that it's not optional, because it doesn't say at any point that you may do it, and it doesn't require discard, it doesn't require disable. Um, but uh, Andrew Parks has come on the, uh, the boards in the FAQ and said that it is optional. So I guess that's errata. Um... So that ability, being op if it was not optional, I would consider it very meh, and uh, and frankly, mainly a drawback in that you don't get actions if you start the round within range one of an enemy. Um, since it is optional, I think it's it's a really good ability. 
Um, I don't know that it's necessarily worth the six points that uh, that this captain costs. He's six points for a skill seven. He only has one uh, elite upgrade slot. I don't know. I, I For six points, I think I would rather just pay one extra point and run Picard on the ship. Uh, it seems like that would be a lot more effective, um, considering that's uh, the only way, well, not the only way, the easiest way to get um, uh, battle stations on the ship. Or even Dukat. Same skill. You get battle stations as a free action every turn. Um, and uh, he, after the uh, faction penalty, he'll cost six as well. So I, I think this guy is overcosted. It's like the Kazon. It's just it costs too much for the effect that you get, considering that not only do you, not only is it not a super strong effect, it's pretty strong, but it's not. Uh, it's not. I would say it's not as strong as an extra action most of the time, and you have to sacrifice your action to do it. So it's an ability with a drawback, and it costs too much. Uh, I, I think that uh, that that we could have done better. Uh, the next card on the preview is called Energy Blast. It's a secondary weapon. It is the new worst card in the game. We have a new worst card in the game. Five attack dice. Uh, you have to spend your target lock and disable it to perform the attack. Uh, target lock is the only offensive dice enhancer uh, that uh, that the, uh, the uh, bio ship has. So you're rolling... Well, it, it gets plus two dice when fired from a, a bio ship. I don't even know why they bothered to do it that way. Why make Energy Blast available for other factions when there's never, ever, ever any reason to use it on another faction? Um, uh, so, from the bio ship, uh, you roll seven dice, not modified, instead of six dice with a target lock. What? What? And this costs six, just like the Dominion uh, uh, torpedo, or the, uh, the battleship's torpedoes. So, uh, and it can't be fired out of rear arc. So even if you put this on a ship with a rear arc, you can't shoot backwards. At least the Dominion torpedoes could shoot backwards. Not this one. New worst card in the game. All right, not going to spend any more time on that. Uh, the energy focusing ship uh, weapon upgrade is the weapon upgrade that might get used. Um, and I can foresee some, uh, some pseudo swarm fleets uh, focusing around this. It's six attack at range two to three. Um, it costs ten points, by the way. But you get plus two damage for each friendly ship that is within range... What is it? Range one? Yeah, within range one of your ship that haven't attacked yet, and then they can't attack later in the round. So it's uh, it, it's like the uh, the super laser on the Death Star, or like the, uh, the, the, the big combining weapon that the 8472 ships do. Um, kind of like that. Uh, so let's say you have the bio ship and four tiny ships, like the Vo and the, the science vessel and whatnot. Um, you can get four little ships... Theoretically, um, and that would give you 14 dice of damage, and it doesn't take your target lock to do so. You can still be target locked. 14 dice with re rolls. Nice. And it's range two or three. So um, I guess in an ideal situation, you would uh, uh, in the first round of engagement, you would move just within range three of their closest ship, snipe it out. And then they can't return fire, theoretically. Um, uh, I, I doubt it would ever actually work like that, but, uh, but that seems to be the idea that they're going for. Um, overall, I consider this uh, an average card. Average to good. Um, I don't think it's great, because it costs 10 points, um, and it, uh, it can only be used once. It's an Alpha Strike card. It's, uh, it's the, the new Barrage of Fire, basically. Um... So let's move on to uh, uh, the next weapon upgrade, which is Biological Attack. Um, at the end of the activation phase, if your ship is uh, touching another ship, so either you bumped them or they bumped you, and neither of you moved away, um, then you can discard it and inflict a critical damage to their hull, even if they have shields left. So this seems to be a running theme with, uh, with Wave 4 so far. Um, the ability to inflict criticals on the hull, even if they have shields. Um... And then you can disable a crew upgrade of your choice on the enemy ship. It's all right. Five points. Sure. It doesn't take an action. It's not your attack. Um, although, I guess you'd have to be kind of tricky. You'd have to make sure that they bump into you in order to not sacrifice your own action for the bumping. Um, I think biological attack uh, is probably going to be the weapon upgrade to run on the bio ship. Um, uh, run two of those. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Uh, it comes with two weapon slots, so you run two copies of biological attack, the same number of points as the uh, the energy focus and shit, but you don't have to sacrifice your attack to use it. It's used automatically if they bump into you. So if you're fighting someone like uh, uh, like Feds or frankly frankly anyone, anyone who uses skill seven captains, because the the alpha, Bioship Alpha pilot is a skill seven, so and uh, eight four seven two has lower rating on the initiative than any other any of the other existing factions so far. Um, so you'll be moving first, probably, and then they move into you, boom, you have spent your action on, for example, a target lock, uh, they bump into you, crit on their hull, hopefully something really nasty, and then you hit them at range three with, uh, uh, your target locked, uh, primary weapon, uh, or at range one with your primary weapon. Uh, so that seems really good. I think biological attack is the best weapon upgrade on this, uh, uh, on this preview. Uh, I consider it... Good, but not great, considering it only, it's a weapon upgrade that only does one damage. Um, yeah, it's five points for only one damage in the entire game, but you did disable a uh, crew upgrade. And against someone like the Feds, who are very likely to be moving after you with their high skill captains, um, disabling crew upgrades is huge, considering they lose their action, Feds are big on actions. So this seems to be the anti-Fed card for this ship. Um, they lose their action, they lose a crew. It's It just seems like a, a really good deal uh, circumstantially. Some fleets don't care at all about this kind of a card. Um, but, uh, but you know, it's, it's gonna be true for a lot of stuff. Uh, the elite talent this comes with is called The Weak Will Perish. Um, when attacking with your primary weapon, after rolling your attack dice, you can discard it and disable your captain to choose any number of your attack dice and re-roll them up to two times. Oh, sorry, I forgot. The, uh, the biological attack, uh, also disables your captain. So we have two cards that disable your captain um, which I think is probably not, I forgot about that with the biological attack, that actually makes it a lot worse. Um, considering the captain's ability can be crucial at times, um, and you'll already be past the point of being able to disable, to re-enable him, so you know you're going to lose him the next turn, uh, not be able to use his ability the next turn. Um, but the weak will perish is kind of like a mini target lock, um, uh, for, by, by, uh, just disabling your captain. Because you can reroll up to, what is it, reroll any number of attack dice up to two times. So it's actually a double target lock. I was looking at the two and I thought it was just two dice. Um, you can actually put this on other ships, uh, but it costs plus five points, so you're not going to. Uh, so it's, I guess this is kind of like their, the, mathematically, I think this works out to being the same as a target lock with battle stations. Uh, a, a re-roll twice. Um, so, so that seems pretty good. Um, I think because you have to disable your captain to use it, and it's only usable once, five points might be a bit much. Again, we're, we're getting with this overcosting for things that already have additional drawbacks. Um, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure what I think about that. The, I would say it's a, it's at least average. I don't, I don't think it's a bad card. Um, since, uh, since that is really high damage potential. You use that, excuse me, um, you can use that in combination with the, uh, the energy focusing ship. So imagine getting 14 dice, re-rolling, uh, uh, blanks and battle stations twice. Um, I, that should work out to about 12, 12 or 13 damage on average, I think. The, uh, where this ship really shines, though, is not the weapon upgrades, it's not the talents, it's not the captain, it's the tech. Uh, it comes with three different tech upgrades and three tech slots. It is the first ship to come with three tech slots. Um, and all of its tech is pretty good, I think. Um, it's got extraordinary immune response, where when you defend, you can discard the card to roll one extra defense die for each damage card that is by your ship. Um, it only works for one defense, which I think makes it probably not worth all five points. Um, but it's the uh, it's the best defensive option the, uh, the 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 bio ship has. Since they don't have battle stations, they can't enhance their uh, defense dice very easily. They have an evade dot an evade action, but evade is a linear enhancement of its defensive capabilities. Whereas this is a uh, 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 what should I call it? It's a I guess it is linear too, huh? So it's adding a specific number of dice. Um, it's, it's the, the comparison between things like, uh, like battle stations and target lock for, 
battle stations and target lock for attacks versus things that just add extra dice. Uh, the things that add extra dice only add a specific number of, uh, of additional expected damage, whereas target lock and battle stations add a percentage of additional expected damage. Um, and I guess this is the same way, but um, but it can be really good. What is it at five five hull? What is the uh, yeah five hull? So you could potentially have up to four damage on this, or five if you have it if have the flagship. Um, which, when you consider, it's five points for possibly up to four extra defense dice uh, once in the game. It's not as good as a cloaking device. It's, it is strictly worse than uh, a cloaking device, which only costs four points. And this is a faction lock. You can't use it for anything uh, uh, other than a bio ship. So uh, that, I think, is garbage. That no one should run. Um, and I, I, I do realize that not two minutes ago I said that all the tech is really good. Uh, I forgot. Actually, what it was is I think I misread this the first time. I thought it was every time you defend, you get that benefit. I didn't realize you had to discard it to get that. Um, the bioelectric interference is an action to use. Uh, is the only card that requires an action to use. Uh, the only card that comes with uh, uh, this ship. You can discard it and remove all tokens from every ship within range 3 of your ship. That is amazing. The bio sh the species 8472 has nothing to fear from cloaked fleets at all. Uh, they can they can decloak every ship, and if they de if you force a ship to decloak, they get their shields back right away. Um, so uh, it's it's interesting to see a ship that does this or a card that does this. Um, considering it's only six points to do, uh, that seems really powerful. Um, and if you go after them, if they're running lower skill captains, uh, you've just gotten rid of all of their uh, all of their their good actions. The cat's knocking things off the desk. So they take battle stations. They take uh, a target lock. You say mm, no, get rid of it. Boom. Gone, and it doesn't affect your own ship, which is the really cool part. So if you have some way of getting additional actions, you take target lock, you take battle stations with Ducat, you get your uh, your action because it doesn't affect you, and they get they lose theirs, and they decloak if they were already cloaked. Um, one possible drawback is that it actually does remove auxiliary power tokens because it doesn't. S oh no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't remove auxiliary power tokens. So that interesting part is not actually all that interesting. Uh, all right, so that, I think, is a, a decent card versus cloaked... It's actually a really, really good card versus cloaked fleets. It is the cloak killer. Um, but, uh, but I think it's not quite as useful as the next card, which is the really exciting one, and it's the one that everybody's... Uh, well, not everybody. I think there are going to be a number of people that are going to buy three copies of this ship just to get three copies of this card to run them all on one ship. This is going to happen sometimes. As an action, the Quantum Singularity allows you to discard it and remove your ship from the play area, discarding all tokens that are beside your ship, except for auxiliary power tokens, uh, which doesn't matter at this point because there's no way to use this card if you have one of those. Um, and during the end phase of that round... Place your ship back in the play area, anywhere you like. Not within range 1 to 3 of any other ship, uh, but other than that, anywhere on the board. It's a teleport! A teleport in a game that's all about maneuvering and positioning. How awesome is that? Right? So they've got you down into a corner. Oh, no, I've run out of space to go. Boop! Teleport! And now you're behind them, and you've got all this space. Or... If you're in like a scenario that has uh, uh, obstacles and it's hard to get from one end of the uh, play area to the other, teleport all the way across and start using your regeneration ability just every round to heal up all that damage. You get a lot of uh, a lot of extra health that way. Um, and then when they corner you again, teleport again, get behind them, and then re-engage. The Quantum Singularity is a, a contender for the strongest card in the game. Um, and uh, it will take some convincing to uh, to get me to name another card 
uh, as as the strongest card in the game. What is stronger than the quantum singularity? Uh, I mean, aside from the obviously overpowered stuff, the stuff that uh, the designers clearly intend for everybody to use, which is you know Picard um, uh, or Ducat if you're using um, if you're using uh, Dominion. You know, there there are obviously cards that everyone's supposed to use. You know, Mister Spock. Uh, uh, Sulu, for those who have discovered him. Uh, it's come to my attention not everybody knows how good Sulu is. Um, but the Quantum Singularity is an amazing card. Uh, and the fact that the Bioship can hold three of them, do it three times during the game, it's... It's... If not the strongest card, it's definitely the sexiest card. Oh my gosh. Um, it, it's the primary reason, I think, to run the bio ship. Um, considering it can only go on a bio ship. You can't put it on any other ship. Um, I, I don't know yet if I'm going to be getting multiples of the bio ship. But if I do, it's for that card. Uh, that is why I would do it. I, don't, I wouldn't ever run more than one bio ship in a game. Uh, well, I wouldn't say not ever. I don't intend to. Uh, it's 38 points, so you can only fit two in a standard fleet anyways. And if you're running a large-scale game, I'm going to run my Dominion stuff, because i got so much Dominion stuff. Um, so that's my review of the Bioship Alpha. Overall, a much better ship than the uh, the, uh, the Kazon Nistrum Raider. Uh, will I be using it in tournaments? I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to play test it. Um, but you can be sure that I'll be packing the uh, the... Quantum Singularity. Maybe more than one. All right, so uh, in other news, um, Star Trek.com recently uploaded a, uh, a preview of Voyager and the Borg Sphere. Uh, it's a low-resolution... They're, they're low-resolution images, so you, you can't really read any text on them. Um, but we can see a few numbers. We can see some symbols. We, we've seen the, uh, the maneuver cards, the, the, the reference cards. So we actually know how all the ships maneuver now. Um... The, uh, and, uh, and we've seen, like, the number of cards, so we know that, like, Voyager has something like five crew or some, something like that, some ridiculous number. Um, the, so, well, I mean, I'll, I'll go into depth on those when the, the previews come out, and I can actually read the cards and evaluate them, uh, but, uh, it, it looks really exciting. Mm -hmm. The, uh, yeah, well, I'm not gonna waste any more time in this video. This video is about the Bioship, and I'm done talking about the Bioship, so... Until uh, the next preview comes out, uh, see you all later.